Hi guys, welcome. Hi guys. Welcome to Keep Trekking. We're at El Elsica Heritage Centre this morning. Well, that's where we're starting off from. It was built in the 1850s uh, as the Earl of Fitz Earl Fitzwilliam's workshops. Uh, so we're starting off from here. Uh, the coal board took over in 1947 and it was closed in the 80s. So, yeah, a bit of history there. Yeah, today what we're going to be doing is the Elsica and Wentworth Circular. It's about nine mile-ish. So we're going to set off and let's go. Let's go. It's an absolutely beautiful Saturday here. Yeah. Uh, I said nine mile in front of us. There the barts, give and take a few. Should be a good laugh this one. It should be, yeah. So we'll press on. Quite a few things to see on this trail. Um, there's some quite exciting treats to see. I'm looking quite forward to this one. We've just come out of the woods from Elsica uh, and we start to walk up a, a meadow which leads up onto the Wentworth estate shortly. And in the distance, you've got Elsica down in the bottom. The Elsica Heritage Centre is where we've come from. Barnsley's that direction. An Oiland and uh, Bedwell, sort of that direction. Absolutely stunning. If you've never been to Elsie Carity Centre before, um, it's all free, free to park, free to get in. They've got some lovely little shops, um, they like little workshops and things, um, and the history of the place is absolutely amazing. So it's well worth a visit. So if you've got some time and you're up this way in uh, Barnsley, Definitely call in. You know, Jay. What? I think I can drive a small car through a needle's eye. I don't think you can. I think that's impossible. Well, funny you should say that. In the late 18th century, the Marquis, second Marquis of Rockingham, said exactly that and made a wager to a friend. Really? That he couldn't drive a coach and horses through a needle's eye. That's very interesting, yes. Phil. And guess what? Tell me a story. He built a needle's eye and drove a horse and carriage through it. And as you can see, there we have the needle's eye. Wow, that's a great structure. Right, needle's eye, like Phil said, it was made as a wager. Obviously, he won his wager. He managed to drive an awesome car, car carriage through this absolutely amazing grade two listed building. Take a look at that. On the very top, you've got an ornamental hearth. Uh, it's made of, I think it's made of local granite stone. Absolutely amazing structure. As we're going through it now, beautiful. You see, it's quite old. Yeah, it's quite weathered inside, but that direction, you've got the exit which takes you down to another road, but it comes all the way from Wentworth Woodhouse, which is in that direction. You can see between the tree lines, there used to be a, uh, a track that used to come up here, straight through the middle of this, and then straight through onto the track at the bottom. Uh, absolutely amazing. I also heard another story about this place. I don't know if it's true or not because stories are sometimes misleading. But on the walls here, as you can see, these are meant to be bullet holes. Musket holes. Now apparently, not sure when, I didn't, uh, not really checked on that, but I should imagine it would be something to do with the prisoners of the possibly Neapolitan Neapolit war can't say that word and they brought prisoners here and they used this as a fighting wall how true that story is I'm not quite sure but what an impressive structure anyway fantastic needles eye here at Wentworth estate got some form, a few more treasures to see on the way so let's get trekking yep see you in a bit some more
just gone to Street Lane, just left um, Needle's Eye there at the far end of Wentworth Estate. Oh. We're in towards a village on Street Lane. Um, I've done this trek before uh, back in June and I cannot find the name of this wee village. If anybody knows, any locals, I'm asking the locals now, <laughs> if anybody knows what the name of the village is, it would be much appreciated if you could let us know what, it, what it's called. I presume they're either old works cottages for the estate or they're old mining cottages. Uh, so once we get there, if you could let us know what the village may be called, if it's actually got a name at all. Some villages haven't, I know that. Fly on me on. Um, so the next place we're heading to has a little bit of history and quite significant to our history yeah. as well. Um, I'll let you know more when we get there. We've just come into the unknown village. Um, some absolutely beautiful buildings, but this is lovely to see. They've actually got a defibrillator. It's nice to see that a small village like this has actually got something like that, possibly for trekkers as well, but gorgeous village. They look like an old farmstead maybe. But further on is what I want to show you. Is possibly um, old mining cottages or works cottages for the estate. There, is, there was a lot of mines around these parts, a lot of colonies that we'll find out shortly. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's off the beaten track, so we'll have to see and find out what it's called, if it's called anything. It may be, <laughs> it may be um, part of another village, it doesn't extend that far that direction, it's just basically one row of houses, um, but these are definitely old, possibly, it, I think these were pro probably works cottages, probably. by the looks of them. Uh, it would be interesting to know if this name, this village has got a name or is it part of Huber, which is further over in the bottom. This could be like an extension to it. Maybe. Morning. This could be an extension to it, but I'll let you have a look at these cottages and you'll tell me what you'll think if they were cottages. I think they probably are. Probably because they're private houses, I'm not going to zoom in them too much, but I think they're probably works cottages for the estate. We're going to believe in the village of Street Lane shortly, and we're going to go up into the woods up to another significant place. Can't believe what I've just done. I can't either. I've just come from that village, which we found out by the way hasn't actually officially got a name uh, as such it's still part of the Wentworth estate so it's still classed as Wentworth some people name the village after this place we're going to show you in a second but it's officially still Wentworth now what I've done <laughs> I've come on <laughs> I've just come over a stile and I walked straight into a tree I wasn't looking I was looking at me view, uh, me, uh, me view ranger to see where I was going next to see which direction and the trees didn't try anything. <laughs> Bang straight into my eye, good you were wearing glasses. Anyway, it's a laugh, we had a laugh about it and everything's fine, I'm okay. Right, this building was built in memorial of per the last pitched battle fought on British soil. If you're a miner, you might disagree with that. There's all, there's all grief. But we're not getting into that today. This was built in 1748 to commemorate a battle that happened in 1746 in the Highlands of Scotland, yeah. a place called Culloden. A lot of you will have heard of it, if not. It was against the, Jack, the government forces uh, commanded by William Augustus, the second son of the King George at the time. 
His four across the field was um, Charles Edward Stewart, commonly known as Bonnie Prince Charlie. It was the Jacobite Rebellion uh, to try and restore King James back onto the throne of Britain. This is to commemorate that. It's called Huber Stand. The village sometimes is called Huber. It's one massive structure. Uh, what I said earlier in the video that this is significant to our history. Well, we've both got Scottish ancestry. Uh, I'm not sure yours fought at Culloden. The shores, the shores fought with the. Yeah. You explain it. The, the shores fought with the with Clan Chatterton uh, as part of a, a mix of different clans that. Uh, yeah, that went. Yeah, it was like a, a consortium of clans, wasn't it? And yeah. wasn't he, he commanded by McGilvery? Yeah. Yeah, which uh, obviously died on the battlefield that day. McGregor's nine. Only a handful of the clan fought on that day, but not as a clan. Um, they fought within different clan system because a couple of days before, the McGregor's fought another battle further north. I can't quite remember what that one's called. I should put it in the description below. Um, but yeah, Uber stand. Yeah. Apparently at the very top, I mean, it's a massive, massive structure. I don't know if this is going to zoom all the way to the top. Possibly. But at the very top there, at the very top, there's a viewing platform where you can actually go up. I think it's closed at the moment, is this place. Um, some say... It's so the aristocrats could watch the hunts. They could go up there, have a cup of tea, sandwiches, prawn sandwiches, you know what I mean, brigade. Could sit up top of there and watch the hunts on the Wentworth estate land. Some say it's just a, a platform to go up to enjoy the views. Make your own mind up. This place is open to the public on certain days of the year, but I believe it's closed at the moment due to current restrictions. Um. But it's an absolutely fantastic structure. Uber stand. It's absolutely massive. There's a plaque up there. Uh, and I'll show. Do you want to read it, Phil? Yeah. It's dated 1748. This pyramidal building was erected by His Majesty's most dutiful subject, Thomas. Marquis of Rockingham, ex. in grateful respect to the preserver of our religion, laws and liberties, King George II, who by blessing of God, having subdued the most unnatural rebellion in Britain, anno 1746, maintains the balance of power and settles a just and honourable peace in Europe, 1748. So... I mean, I've got different views on that, whether it was, you know, just and whether it was an unnatural rebellion, but, you know. I think it was a rebellion that was a, that was forced to happen, to be yeah. fair, and it was inevitable that it was going to happen. You either believe which side you want to believe. I'm no Jacobite, I'm no Hanoverian, neither. Mm. Uh, I am a royalist, mine, but... Uh, Unnatural rebellion? Nah, I'm no. not so sure. No. I'm not so sure. Let me know your comments, uh, your thoughts in the comments below, please. So this is Uber Stand. Absolutely amazing building. Massive. It's huge. Yeah. Built in 1748.